Uh, thanks for coming. I'm David Disseldorp. This is uh, Samuel Cabrero from, from SUSE. And we're going to speak about uh, the witness protocol and its implementation in Samba. Um, so we'll start off just with an introduction to, to Samba. And uh, so we don't have a, a PA within the room, so I'll just have to try and reach everyone. Um, I'll start off with an introduction to Samba and CTDB, or, or clustered Samba. Um, we'll then move on to the witness protocol, um, some of the details of the, the protocol itself. Um, we have a, a, a demo, so just a video of um, the witness protocol in action. And then we'll finish with sort of an outlook um, where we're heading with, with this stuff, um, what we need to do to get it sort of in shape for upstream. So starting off with uh, Samba, hopefully you're all familiar. It's a SMB file server. Um, it handles um, authentication, um, Active Directory integration, so you can join um, a domain controller or act as a, a domain controller. Um, uh, with Samba, we have uh, one main daemon, which is or one main file server daemon, which is um, SMBD. Um, it's then generally forked for, for each client connection. Um, we have a, a pluggable file system back end, so a, a VFS layer. Um, and this is then what we use for, for things like our Ceph. Um, we have um, a Lips FFS um, integration for ButterFS. We have some sort of snapshot specific stuff. Um, we have Winbind for um, the authentication ID mapping or ID integration part. Um, and uh, with the protocol itself, um, we have a bunch of state, um, which um, obviously then needs to be tracked by the server. Um, yeah, so for things like um, open files, uh, leases, um, user mapping, we store that in, in a database. Um, so we use um, TDB or Trivial Database for that um, on a standalone system. Um, what was initially trivial is now sort of, I guess, um, had a bit of feature creep in that it supports things like um, transactions, um, record locking. Um, we have multiple writers, so multiple um, SMBD processes um, writing at the same time to, to those databases. For clustered Samba, um, we then have uh, CTDB. Um, so this then handles um, basically in the case of a, an active-active um, Samba cluster, we have these um, or a consistent database across um, all of these nodes. It also has um, a number of HA fe features integrated. So we have uh, things like IP failover, um, service monitoring. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I guess you could say, a, a proper HA stack as well for a clustered Samba setup. Um, yeah, placement within the... Um, CTDB database is then uh, computated based on yeah, a hash of, of the key, so we can find out um, from that um, the master or a node which knows the location of, of that record. Um, and from that uh, location master, we then have yeah, another level of indirection to find out where it's actually placed. So you can move um, sort of uh, records around the, the cluster to, to where they're needed. Um, we have um, amongst the, the CTDB nodes, we have um, election of uh, a recovery master, and that recovery master then performs in the event of an outage, um, things like yeah, cleaning up uh, mid-transaction. Um, uh, yeah, that also holds a, um, a clustered mutex or requires a, a, a cluster mutex. Um, so with CTDB, that's generally placed on the a clustered file system um, backing the, the Samba servers or the file servers. Uh, with Ceph, we have sort of a, a, a helper um, binary which, which uses um, a Rados um, or Rados locks for that. Um, for IP failover, um, it uses what's called a, a Tickle app, ACK, um, which sort of speeds up the process of a, a client um, in the event of an outage uh, reconnecting to to another node after IP failover. Um, so this is then a look at sort of how yeah, things have changed or are changing with um, clustered SMB serving. 
Um, so with Windows, um, in the past they've had um, active-passive um, setups where they have this file server role which moves across nodes within the cluster. Um, yeah, CTDB has, has always been active-active um, to the point that, or, or where clusters are then sort of spread across um, those um, CTDB or SMB uh, gateway nodes. So now on to witness somewhere. Thanks, David. So starting with the definition, uh, witness is a new DC RPC. Louder, please. So starting with the definition, witness is a new DC RPC based uh, mechanism uh, to inform the clients about changes in the topology or the state of or the state of the cluster, and it helps together with new features in the SMB3 protocol uh, to provide transparent uh, failover for the cluster clients. And additionally, it also ca uh, can be used to load balance the cluster because you can tell a client on demand to move to another uh, cluster node. So before um, explaining how witness works, let's have a look at uh, how failover uh, was working in SMB1 and SMB2 clusters. So in a Windows cluster, uh, we have a server that is ho holding the file server role. So the client opens the SMB connection to, to this node, and if the node goes down, the cluster moves the role to another server, but the client has to wait for the TCP timeout to reconnect. So after the TCP timeout, the client reconnects. So the protocol does not define any failover mechanism at all in SMB1 and SMB2. In a Samba cluster, I uh, think the failover works, works better because Samba implements additional measures to speed up the recovery, as David said before. Uh, the IP takeover, the gratuitous IRP and TC, and TKL AC keys. So in a CTDB cluster, the IP, all nodes are active at the same time and the IP addresses are uh, distributed uh, between the nodes. So the client opens the SMB connection and when a node uh, goes down, the cluster enters in recovery state and runs the IP takeover algorithm which moves the IP address to another node. And after that, CTDB sends a gratuitous IRP to the client to inform about the new MAC address associated to the IP and also sends a TKL AC key that is a crafted uh, TCP packet with a wrong sequence number which has the effect of, a, of the client automatically reset the connection without having to wait for the timeout. So the client reconnect. In SMB3, Microsoft added new features to the protocol to provide um, transparent client failover. Uh, one is the witness services that we are going to see how it works now, and another one is persistent handles. Um, the idea, I'm just going to give the idea of persistent handles, and when the client opens a file in a server, the server has to store what is called the file, file handle state, which contains information about the leases, the share modes, and the logs. So if the server crashes, uh, before persistent handle, this information was lost, but with persistent handles, this file handle state is somehow persisted. So the client can, uh, when he reconnects, he can request the server to open, to, to reuse the file handle state. And in cluster environments, uh, this file handle state is also um, synchronized or distributed across the cluster. So a client can open a file in another node in the same, in the same state. So in an SMB3 cluster, um, the all nodes are running the witness service and the client opens two different connections. And it's important to, to, know, to remark that these connections are always to uh, different nodes. So when the, uh, the node holding the file server role uh, crashes, two things happen. 
the cluster moves the role to another server, but and also the witness uh, service tells the client about this movement, so the client can react and automatically reconnect to the other node. And now uh, we are going to explain about the demo environment that we are using. Sure. Okay, yes. so the, um, you, you had the, those two servers, right? And I'm assuming that we are detecting the crash either with the client or with the, the second server. So the, uh, the question was, um, how is the crash detected right. um, for failover? Um, and in, in the case of witness, um, it's generally driven by the, the cluster. So the cluster notices an outage. Um, and then tells the, the client about that. So there, there is a, an independent uh, entity that is detecting this, or it's mm -hmm. the demons themselves? So, it, I mean, it depends on the implementation. For Samba, um, we have uh, CTDB basically managing the um, clustered SMB gateways. Um, and in that case, they notice um, an outage of a node. Um, so they're continuously monitoring uh, the gateway nodes, they notice this outage and then notify the clients um, for failover. So I'm assuming if CTDB goes down, everything goes down? If uh, uh, the quorum or if uh, the majority of um, CTDB nodes go down, then so yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so just sort of explaining the, the uh, demo setup we have. Um, so we have our um, Ceph cluster. Um, we have uh, the Samba gateways. Uh, so in this case, two gateways in front of um, the Ceph cluster. Um, these uh, gateways are using um, the uh, VFS Ceph backend for Samba. Um, also CTDB, um, then is the uh, cluster service and um, key value store for Samba. Um, yeah, we have a, a bunch of changes on top of our current mainline. So um, Samuel implemented the, the witness server. Um, I worked on the um, async DCRPC server. Um, persistent handles were implemented by uh, Ralph Boomer from uh, CERNET. Um, yeah, we also have uh, from uh, Stefan Metzmacher, from, also from CERNET, um, the T-event impersonation changes. Um. Uh, so it's, it's a little difficult to see. Um, <laughs> I mean, we do get a pretty graph on the, on the right-hand side, so we can at least see something later on. Um, I'll try to sort of guide through what's going on anyway. So we have, um, yeah, these are the, the, two, no the two CTDB nodes, um, and the corresponding uh, witness server logs are, yeah, um, the other two black squares there. <laughs> um, yeah, gee, it's, it's barely readable. Um, so in this case, we're just um, yeah, initially connecting to the, um, uh, to the cluster. So this is a um, Windows Server 2012 R2 client. Um, Uh, so here we can see, um, so we've just done a, a connection to the cluster, um, and here we can see that um, the client has then uh, basically registered with the, the witness service, so it sends this um, async notify request um, to witness, and what happens now is that um, that, that request basically sleeps on the witness server side, and a response um, is sent when a notification um, is is then uh, ready for the client. Um, yeah, so we're at least try <laughs> trying to show uh, the, I think this is the SMB yeah, status yeah, output. <laughs> this, this is the, yeah, this is the output of, uh, there is a new SMB, SMB witness uh, list command that it tells you uh, 
well, you, you will have to believe me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this says that the client is registered on the CTDB node uh, one. This uh, here is the client name. It's just the computer, the computer name. Here it tells it tells you that the SMB connection is open to node uh, class CTDB node zero, and this is the network the network name. That, okay, uh, so. This is node, node one. And this is the SMB st status output. Uh, just to check that the client is uh, connected to one IP that is assigned to the node, to the node zero. This, this is the output, uh, the association of the IP addresses to the, to the CTDB nodes. Um, this was uh, 13, and 13 is in node 0. So uh, I, uh, now we are prepa preparing the SM SMB witness, SMB wi the new SMB witness move command to tell the client to move to the other node. So SMB witness move the client name and the the node, the new node. So I. So I, I guess we should say at this point. So in this case, we're not triggering a failover, and mm -hmm. um, we also have or at least uh, Samuel implemented um, the ability to, to just do a manual notification, so to request that the client then move its um, SMB or file server connection from one node to another. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so the connection is uh, throttle, is in KVM, so now when you... Uh, this here is the, uh, the output of F SMB status to check the address uh, where the client is connected. This is the node one. So now, when now we have to tell the client to move the connection, so it goes down. But the f copy continue. So all, all of this requires client it requires the witness service on the client. Um, to accept these notifications or to, to notice these changes or act on these changes. Now, uh, now we are checking that the connection has been moved to, our, to the other node with SMB status and the association of the IP addresses in the cluster. But what you are showing can also be done with durable file handle? No difference. So, what's the what's additional? Uh, the, what is additional is well, this was uh, could be achieved with uh, Samba gratuitous IRP and TKL easy keys. This is something new defined in the SMB three protocol. That I mean, gratuitous IRP and TKL easy keys is a Samba addition, but is outside of the protocol. Microsoft now has defined. Uh, persistent handles and the witness services just for that. I mean, the it, the so lazy case was like a trick. So, so I think the main point here is that there's no interruption to the application layer. Mm -hmm. So we have failover between nodes within the cluster without the, the application, in this case just a, an explorer copy, uh, noticing. Yeah, but uh, you can so. achieve that with durable file handles. I mean, that's the same example you're doing with uh, if you do a CTV move IP and you have implemented durable file handles, it would work just the same. Uh, so in that case, basically there's an outage at the, the SMB protocol layer um, and the client then forces a reconnect. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have a separate witness service which basically tells the client, right. please move to, to a different node. So yeah. it's, um, it's controlled and um, yeah, done at a, a layer separate to or such that the application uh, doesn't really notice um, the the outage or the the move between servers. Uh, so it was just a question on um, basically uh, whether this could already be achieved with um, durable file handles. Um, um, now the connect. I have, now here we have moved again the connection to to CTDB node one, and the file transfer uh, continues. So He's just saying that he's moved it again from, from one node to another and then moved 
uh, back again. Um, yeah, just while the, the copy is in progress. So, um, um, yeah, so uh, that's sort of what we have as a, a prototype. Um, yeah, we still have quite a bit of work to do for, for upstreaming, mostly in the um, DCE RPC server layer. So we have this um, uh, source 3 implementation of um, asynchronous DCRPC server. Um, so Samuel has um, also worked on then uh, merging the uh, source 3 and source 4 um, implementations. Um, so that gets us to, uh, I think, a much cleaner point where we can then start upstreaming the, the witness stuff on, on top of that. Um, yeah, another possible future feature would then be um, automatic load balancing, so basically from the cluster side, seeing which nodes um, have free resources and, and moving, uh, sorry, moving client nodes, balancing client nodes uh, between uh, the cluster more, more evenly. Um, yeah, this is more on the, the Ceph side, so um, currently we have um, uh, CTDB um, acting as then the, the clustered key value store with um, Ceph. Um, backing the, the file server, we, we have another option f uh, as a, a key value store, so um, we can potentially look at um, using Ceph instead of um, CTDB and then also making use of um, Rados classes to sort of offload some of the compute uh, to the database. Compute of the database, can you explain? Uh, so, so Samba does, so the question was um, compute uh, of the database, can I expand on that? Um, so Samba does some things like um, traversal to you know look up specific records. This is like incredibly uh, intensive on at least it for a CTDB case. Um, it's uh, very inefficient. So using Rados classes for for something like that, where we can offload that operation to to where the storage or where the key value store is located, so would be. Key value store would be basically offloaded to. Rados itself, and then just call the, the... No, so I think we'd still use the OMAP layer for the most part, or at least we'd start with just basic OMAP um, on the, the Samba side, and then uh, when we see what sort of can be nicely offloaded to the cluster, we could then go, go down that path. I mean, just a... Um, yeah, otherwise, that's it. So I think we have a few minutes for questions. Otherwise, just grab us in the... Two minutes, so just grab us in the hall otherwise. Mm -hmm. um. Any very pressing questions? Yes? Is there a risk condition on the client because you realize the server would go down and that the start might do things to keep speed timeout on the client and a timeout on the cluster server detecting, oh, it's gone. And then on the client, there would be a situation either So the, the question was, is there a, a race condition in this case where, um, yeah, where we have um, both things sort of timing out on the client side and, and server side simultaneously? Um, for the, the witness case, it's, um, yeah, it's important to remember that uh, the client automatically tries to use separate nodes for the file server and the witness server. So in that case, um, if the file server goes down, we can notify via the, uh, the witness channel. So we have a separate channel to basically manage the, the failover in that case. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay.